What is going on everybody? Shwayze here and in today's video we're comparing the two most legendary, most powerful off-road vehicles on the market today. We're talking the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 and the 2023 Ford Bronco Raptor. Let's get started. We are here with Spencer at Makes and Models. Spencer, tell us a little bit about your dealership. Yeah, thank you. My name is Spencer. I'm the sales manager here at Makes and Models. We've been in business now for 12 years. We specialize in Highline European vehicles as well as supercars. We've got a little bit of everything. We have a full service department in the back. You name it, we do it all. Uh, we'd love for you to come by, check us out. Thanks again for coming out. We appreciate Thanks your so much, time. Thanks so much, Spencer. Appreciate it. I'm going to put their information down in the description below, so check them out. Let them know Swayze sent you. Okay, so you have the Ford Bronco Raptor and you have the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. These are the two most capable, most powerful off-road vehicles on the market today. And in today's video, we're gonna compare these two and I'm gonna finish off with my recommendation between the two. Which one should you buy and why? First, let's talk about the sizing here. As you can see, the Ford Bronco has a little bit of a higher hood line than the Jeep Wrangler. Even though ground clearance is very similar, the Ford Bronco is a larger vehicle overall. Now, as I'm sure you can also notice, there is a difference in width from wheel to wheel. The Jeep Wrangler has a width of about 73.9 inches versus the Ford Bronco Raptor is a whopping 85.7 inches wide. So we're talking almost one foot wider in this thing than you are in the Wrangler. And because of that, you have to have these orange marker lights on the Ford Bronco because due to federal regulation, you have to have orange marker lights if you're above a certain width. But coming over to the length of the vehicles, well, the Jeep Wrangler is about 188.4 inches long, whereas the Bronco Raptor is about 191 inches long. So we're not talking about a significant difference in length. Now let's talk about the styling because it really does come down to personal preference. Starting with the Jeep Wrangler, this has been revised for the 2024 model year. So you have a different looking front grille. It's still the seven slot Jeep Wrangler grille that's from the 1940s, but they've actually opened up these air slots in between to provide some additional airflow into that engine. They've also made it a little bit narrower because now you can get a worn winch directly from the factory. You've also got LED headlights and LED side marker lights. Now coming to the side, you guys have all seen what a Jeep Wrangler looks like. You got these big fender flares. They've also removed the antenna for the 2024 model year. They've integrated that now into the windshield, but you know, generally the exact same shape they had before. It's still pretty boxy, uh, pretty traditional. It's more of an evolution from the previous generations. And in the back, you have LED taillights. You've got this large full-size spare tire. You've also got a steel front and rear bumper. And then this one being the 392, you've got four exhaust outlets coming out into the back. You've also got rear parking sensors, but overall a pretty good looking vehicle. However, this 392 trim isn't that much different than your conventional Jeep Wrangler. This looks very similar to every other Rubicon, aside from the fact that you have these bronze gold accents that outline the Jeep emblem and on the decal over here on the hood and on the tow hooks up front. Other than that, you really couldn't tell that this is the Rubicon 392. All right, now let's take a look at the Raptor. You have this giant Ford emblem up here at the front, very traditional Ford Raptor type of styling. You got the traditional LED headlights with the signature lighting. Similar to the Wrangler, you also have a steel bumper. You've also got this exposed skip plate over here and tow hooks similar to the Wrangler as well. Now coming over to the side, you have a much wider fender flare here, different than all the other Ford Broncos on the market. You've also got these air inlets. They're actually functional over here. And then other than that, the side looks very similar to the existing Ford Bronco, but it is definitely wider. Even this panel over here is wider than the existing Sasquatch Bronco. And then this fender flare, I mean, you could have an entire lunch or dinner on this thing because it's that big. I mean, this is like a tabletop. It is absolutely huge. And that is really where you gain the extra foot of width as compared to the Wrangler. But they had to do this because, you know, they have a wider track, bigger wheels and tires, which we'll talk about later. But coming to the back, different types of LED taillights than your traditional Bronco. You've got a different type of mount for your big full-size tire. You also have steel bumper and rear parking sensors. You've got this cool Raptor badge. You don't really have any cool badging on the Wrangler aside from this 392 badge located 
located on the hood. However, one thing the Wrangler has that this one doesn't is quad exhaust ports. You really just have a two outlet exhaust over here uh, located on the driver's side. And then you can take a look at the rear quarter panel. Definitely looks different than all the other Ford Broncos on the road. You can instantly tell that this is a Bronco Raptor. Okay, now let's talk about the exterior similarities between these two. First of all, you can remove all four doors on the Bronco and on the Wrangler. For the Bronco, since they have a frameless window, you can roll this window all the way down. As a result of that, you can fit all four doors in the trunk area. You can't actually do that with the Jeep because, well, they're not frameless windows. They are integrated into the door panel, but you can remove these panels over here and there is a storage bag in the back where you can store them. So in some ways it's a little bit similar. The other thing that's similar between the two is you can remove the hard top as well on both of these. Now, although this has the advantage with the doors fitting in the trunk, this has the advantage with the Sky One Touch Power roof. And that is this soft top roof that with the push of a button on the inside can open up automatically without having to get out of the vehicle and fold it over. Now, of course, the Bronco Raptor has a hard top roof, so you have to get out of the vehicle to take it off. And the advantage to that is it should generally be quieter in the Bronco Raptor, but you can get this with a hard top as well. This is kind of an additional option that's almost $4,000, but I think it's worth it because it opens up this large opening in the first and second row. And then with the push of a button, you can close it up as well. The Bronco, you have to get out of the vehicle to pull out all of these different levers and unlock this hard top roof. Now, you can't get the soft top from the factory on the Raptor, but you can get it in the aftermarket. But even in the aftermarket, most of them you have to get out of the vehicle and fold it open. It's not like what you have in the Wrangler where you just push one button and it will automatically open and close. Now, one thing to note about these frameless doors is even though you can now fit your doors into the trunk, which is a big advantage, also to note you have the side view mirrors located over here on the cowl or the hood versus here on the Wrangler, they're located on the door. But the other maybe disadvantage to having frameless windows is as you open the door, the window sometimes kind of shakes a little bit because it's, uh, you know, having to lower to get out of the seal over at the top. Whereas in the Jeep, it's more solid, kind of shakes a little bit and it just makes it feel like it's not as solid as the Jeep Wrangler's door. You know, in terms of styling, it's really personal preference. Uh, this one looks a little bit more aggressive, meaner, more uh, intimidating than this one, but this is kind of has that classic Jeep styling. The one that goes back to the 1940s. It's got a lot of heritage built into it. Whereas this is kind of a mix of of modern and retro. Okay, jumping inside the Jeep Wrangler, you may have seen my full comprehensive review of this vehicle, but I do want to give you kind of a quick overview. Soft touch material over here. You got your lock and unlock button, your door handles nice and aluminum, mirror controls over here on the door panel itself, nice leather wrapped surfaces with some red stitching. You'll notice red is kind of the interior color of the Wrangler 392. Now, taking a look at these seats, these are Napa red leather seats, and they've got Rubicon 392 spelled across the top. These feel really nice, look really nice. They're actually pretty comfortable. A lot of people say Wrangler seats aren't comfortable. And I took this on a two, 300 mile road trip and it was perfectly fine. Now, a first for 2024, you have power operated seats. These are eight way adjustable and then four way lumbar support as well. And Jeep says you can go through upwards of 34 inches of water fording with this exposed to the water. So assuming you have the doors off and you're gonna be just fine. Now you don't have really any type of washout floors here cause you have carpeting, but there is a hole down here. So if you do make a mess, you can wash it out, but unfortunately your carpet will get wet in the process. Now, moving upwards towards the steering wheel, the entire interior has been updated for 2024. First off, let's turn this vehicle on. Boy, that sounds good. We'll talk about performance in a minute, but you have this seven inch digital gauge cluster display. Oddly enough, the gauges here are orange instead of red, but that's really the only place you'll find that. You've also got a solid sounding thunk when you close the door. Sounds very utilitarian, very solid. And uh, on the steering wheel, a lot more of that red stitching. This is leather wrapped. It is a heated steering wheel as well. On the left-hand side, you've got your controls to regulate your seven inch gauge cluster display. Not too much functionality here, really just the basic features like MPG, uh, your pitch and roll, your tire pressure, stuff like that. But nonetheless, nice that you have some digital integration. And then you have a digital screen over here that shows your four high, four low, and four auto controls. Um, and then the speedometer here goes up to 120 miles per hour, but this thing is governed at 112 miles per hour. On the right hand side of the steering wheel is your adaptive cruise control functionality. Now I do want to mention that you have aluminum paddle shifters located over here for the up and the down. They feel really good in the hands and they work really quick with that eight speed auto. Now on the left hand side of the steering wheel, you got this nice textured 
I think this is injection molded plastic material, but it is soft touch, a little bit more of that red with the red stitching. Moving down here, you have your automatic light controls and then a little Easter egg where you have a current gen Jeep Wrangler and Jeep Gladiator. You've got your speaker over here. This one does come with the nine speaker Alpine audio system. Moving upwards here, one thing I will notice is the dashboard seems to be a little bit closer to the hood than that in the Bronco. The Bronco is a little bit larger. All of this is some soft touch material here. Uh, nice leather wrapped, it feels really good. That same injection molded plastic material. It's got texture to it, got some red stitching. You've got this revised grab handle here that feels really good in the hands and just a very utilitarian shape to the interior. Now coming over here, let's talk about this large 12.3 inch infotainment screen. This is now standard on all Jeep Wrangler models, regardless of whether it's a 392 or the base sport trim level. And it's got Uconnect 5, which is a very snappy, very quick system. Uh, it works very well. I haven't had any issues with it. Very easy to understand. You've also got a quick access button to open up your camera settings. So this one only comes with a front and a rear camera. And that does come standard on the Wrangler 392. You can option it for the other trim levels. Now, no longer do you have the round circular air vents. They're now horizontal to fit this large screen, but you do have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android, Auto. And then something cool that I've noticed in this vehicle is if you have the onboard navigation system, you can actually find pre-mapped trails. So if you go into your vehicle settings, there's something called adventure guides. And not only can it find trails near you, but it also has preloaded trails kind of in the somewhat near vicinity. So you can pull up, for example, fins and things in Moab and see what the difficulty level is and how to get there. That's really cool. And that's something I wish more off-road vehicles came with. Now moving down here, you have a lot of redundant controls, physical switches for your volume, your fan speed, and your seek and track buttons, heated steering wheel, heated seats on this one. You've also got this active exhaust button. This is probably my favorite button in the vehicle because it makes the exhaust noticeably louder. Uh, you may have heard it on camera, maybe not, but I love having that thing on. This is where you control your airflow. And then down here are your window switches. And then you've got a 12 volt power outlet over here, just a cigarette style. And you've got a ton of different USB ports and an auxiliary port. Down here is your front and rear locker. You have your off-road mode. And then you've got the sway bar disconnect button. You've also got four different auxiliary switches where uh, there's pre-wiring located throughout the vehicle and you can wire up different auxiliary things like lighting or a winch if you didn't have one and you can activate it using those buttons. You do have your four high, four low and four auto selector over here. There's no two wheel drive because there's just way too much power in this vehicle to put it into a rear wheel drive vehicle. Uh, you got your gear selector here with the little 1940s Jeep emblem on there. looks really nice. Two cup holders. Uh, manual handbrake, which is kind of different than most cars nowadays. What I don't see in here is any type of wireless charging. That's odd because, you know, this vehicle would be expected to have it at its price point. Nice soft armrest over here. You got red stitching, a two-tier type of arm console with a USB port in here. And then you do have a little bin style on the smaller side glove compartment. Now, another thing that's missing in this general area is a drive mode selector. I mean, you have this off-road mode where with the push of a button, it'll activate by turning off your traction control and telling you to put it into four high or four low, but that's not really a true drive mode. There's no sport mode, there's no Baja mode. And those are things that you'll find on the Ford Bronco over there. All right, now jumping into the Bronco, First thing you'll notice is this door is generally larger than that in the Wrangler. Starting off, you've got soft touch material over here at the top, but this is hard touch plastic. So that's a little bit more premium on the Wrangler than it is on the Bronco. Still have the nice aluminum door handle, lock and unlock buttons. This is also a hard touch plastic material, but where you're gonna rest your elbow is nice leather wrap. You've also got hard touch plastic here and a small net over here with some orange coloration. Now that's one thing you'll notice on the interior here is the Wrangler had red accents on the interior, whereas the Ford Bronco Raptor has orange accent. This is actually called Code Orange and it kind of matches the Raptor theme. That's kind of the Raptor color for the F-150 and the Bronco. Now starting off with these seats, there are two options. You can either get marine grade vinyl or leather trimmed vinyl. And you have Raptor over here, similar to how you had it on the Wrangler. I do think the Wrangler seats are a little bit more eye-catching, but you do have some pretty cool design over here on the seat back and the seat cushion. They also appear to have a little bit more bolstering than that in the Wrangler. Now moving further down, you don't have power seats even as an option on the Bronco. That's only reserved for the Wrangler, but you do have height adjustments and lumbar support on this one as well. It's just not power operated. And taking a look over here at the bottom, you do have washout floors, and then you can open up that plug and drain the interior. Now jumping inside these seats, I do want to mention they do feel like they have a little bit more thigh support than the Wrangler. Now closing the door, it sounds good but I can't say it sounds as solid as the Wrangler. Now let's turn this vehicle on. 
It doesn't sound as good in the startup noise, which is to be expected because, well, we'll talk about what's under the hood here. Starting off with the steering wheel, this is similar to the Bronco steering wheel I have on my Big Ben, but it feels a little bit thicker. Nice 10 and two notches. Now on the left-hand side of the steering wheel are your controls for your cruise control. Now the benefit of the Raptor is you have lane departure warnings. So this vehicle will actively track the lanes. And if you're starting to veer left or right, it will vibrate the steering wheel and let you know over here on the gauge cluster, the Wrangler does not come with that as an option. Down below the cruise control is your button to control the different type of steering mode. So you can go comfort, you can go sport or normal. You've also got this R button, which stands for Raptor and you push that and that pulls up your different types of drive modes. That is one big advantage of the Bronco Raptor is you have a set of different drive modes, which we'll talk about here with the GOAT modes than what you have in the Wrangler. Uh, on the right-hand side of the steering wheel is your button to control your suspension. So you can make it uh, softer, you can make it off-road worthy or normal. And then there's a button to control the exhaust sound, similar to how you would find inside of the Wrangler. Now I just pushed this button and I can't say I noticed a significant difference. Whereas in the Wrangler, I did notice quite a big difference when I pushed that exhaust button. Moving further up, these are just your buttons to control your instrument gauge cluster display. Now, this is different than all other Broncos. This is a 12 inch all digital display and it works pretty well. I mean, this is kind of similar to what you'd find on some of the F-150s out there. It's a pretty robust system. It's got more information than what you can find in the Wrangler. Uh, you can pull up your off-road modes and kind of cycle through all of the different uh, types of angles and pitch and roll and where your power is headed. So lots of uh, features located right inside of this screen. Now behind the steering wheel, similar to the Wrangler, you have paddle shifters. Now the material doesn't feel as nice, but these are definitely larger. They actually encompass the entire steering wheel whereas in the Wrangler, they're about a half a paddle shifter because you have buttons on the back of the steering wheel. And then you'll notice on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you've got more of that orange accent for the air vent. You got a little grab handle over here and down below here are your lighting controls. And then you got your button for your electronic parking brake. And then you've got your hood release latch over there. Now talking about this section over here, this is kind of a hard touch material. It is somewhat leather wrapped, but it feels a little bit better in the Wrangler. Wrangler has all of this as kind of a soft touch material. This one is a little bit on the sturdier side, but this is meant to be a durable off-road vehicle. But as you can see, the distance from me to the windshield is much further here in the Bronco than it is in the Wrangler. Also over here is where you have all of your locker buttons, your sway bar disconnect. Uh, this has something that the Wrangler doesn't, which is the trail turn assist. So it will actually break the uh, left or right passenger tire in the back to make your turn a little bit more precise, a little bit smaller. So if you're in a tight spot and you probably will be in a vehicle this wide, you can turn this on. Your turning radius is gonna be a lot smaller than if you just turn the wheel. It's almost like rear wheel steering, but it's a much more simple form of that. You also have some mounts over here to put like a GoPro and you've even got a little charging port over here with a USB port and a USB-C port. Uh, I like these buttons, they feel very rubberized and even on the steering wheel, all of this is rubberized material, it's more durable. And then up top here, you've got your auxiliary buttons. It almost makes you feel like you're kind of like a fighter pilot or something, like breaker, breaker, you know, I'm just gonna turn this feature on. And there's six over here versus four in the Wrangler. You do have a home link system, the Wrangler did as well. And then moving across the dash, not as nice of a material here as in the Wrangler, but still looks really good. I like that orange accents and the embossed Bronco logo. And then the uh, interior just looks very rugged, very utilitarian, similar to that in the Wrangler. Now here you have a 12 inch infotainment screen. It's got the Sync 4 software. You got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto and uh, lots of functionality here. If you guys have used Ford system before, you'll be very familiar with this. I would say it's on par with the Uconnect 5 system. It's really just personal preference and just the user interface is a little bit different, but a very large screen and it fits really well here in the middle. It's a little bit more boxier in shape versus the Wrangler is a little bit more horizontal. I think I prefer this one because it makes it look more like a television screen, whereas that one just looks a little bit too widescreen for me. Down here, you've got your physical volume buttons. You got a camera to pull up your 360 camera. This is something you can't can't even get on the Wrangler uh, and it gives you a full bird's eye view, a top down view of the Bronco, which is nice when you're parking this pretty wide vehicle and you can cycle through the different camera angles. You can do front, you can do back depending on whether you're in drive or reverse. But I like that you have that as an option, especially if you're off-roading, that's very helpful to have. Here you have your auto start stop button where you can turn it off. The Wrangler doesn't even come with that. You have parking sensors front and back versus the Wrangler only has it in the back. Seek and track buttons over here and then 
Down here are your controls for your heated seats, heated steering wheel, you've got your fan speed and your AC modes, and then you've got dual zone climate control. You've also got a wireless charging pad here, and you can hook up a few extra devices with two USB ports. You've got this cool Bronco Ford Performance Badge located on the center dash, which looks really good. And then a nice leather shifter, feels really good in the hands. You've got a Bronco logo here, just like the Wrangler has a little Jeep logo. Now moving further back, these are your drive mode selectors. So you've got seven different drive modes that you can cycle through, and I love the graphics over here, but every Everything from tow haul mode to slippery to normal to sport to eco to Baja to rock crawling. I mean, so many different things and it will automatically adjust your four high, four low, four auto settings, even your two high if you need it with just shifting into a different drive mode. Now moving over here, you have two cup holders. Your window switches are located over here and this is kind of a cheap hard touch plastic material. And then you've got your mirror controls there as well. I do like this leather wrapped center arm console. You got Raptor over here. I'm surprised this isn't orange stitch but it's only a one tier setup and it's pretty deep overall. You can fit a lot of stuff there and then you got a little compartment where you can hide some change. Uh, over here on the glove compartment side, it's a pretty large glove compartment, a little bit larger than that in the Wrangler. Now, whereas the Jeep Wrangler comes mostly fully equipped here for the 2024 model year, there are a couple options that you can get equipped in addition uh, for the Ford Bronco Raptor. So one of those things is an upgraded Bang & Olufsen 10 speaker audio system. The standard audio system is just seven speakers and a subwoofer. Also, that wireless charging and the heated steering wheel, those aren't standard on all Bronco Raptors. You have to equip it to be able to come with that, along with the built-in navigation system. Now, another couple options you can pay for is a carbon fiber interior package where some of this trimmings will be carbon fiber instead of this black plastic. And you can get code orange seat belts for a few hundred bucks. Both things I'd probably pass on. Now, jumping into the second row of the Wrangler, same nice use of materials here, leather wrapped armrest, red stitching, a little net here at the bottom. What I will say is this entrance is a little bit narrower than that in the Bronco because the door is a little bit narrower and you also have a bigger angle over here versus the Bronco, it's not as big of an angle. So it's a little bit easier to climb in and out of the Bronco than it is the Wrangler. Uh, nice red leather seats over here. You do have a center arm console over here with two cup holders. You've also got two air vents back here, your window switches. You've got tons of USB ports under here and a household power outlet, little storage compartment here as well. And then climbing inside, let me show you what the leg room looks like. It's actually stated to be more than that in the Bronco. You're looking at 38.2 inches of leg room and just around 40 inches of headroom in the second row. Now, one disadvantage in my opinion with the Wrangler is you have this crossbar that goes all the way from the driver to the passenger side. It does house your speakers and your lights, but it kind of obstructs the view when you have this giant power top roof open. You're kind of staring into this then into the beautiful sky. That is an advantage of the Bronco and I'll show you what that looks like in the second row. Now, jumping into the back of the Bronco, same same materials that you have in the front row. Again, a little bit more of that orange stitching. And like I said, this entrance just seems a little bit wider and this door lock mechanism isn't in the way. Whereas in the Wrangler, I've actually bumped it getting in and out of the vehicle quite a few times. So I like the way that Ford has integrated that here so you don't constantly hit your elbow. It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference. Now taking a look at these seats, same marine grade vinyl type of interior as the first row. But the disadvantage here is with the marine grade vinyl, you don't have a center arm console. So you can't rest your elbows when you're going off-roading. Also, a big disadvantage here, there's no rear air vents. You do have your window switches here, nice household power outlet, and then you've got some USB ports over here as well. So similar in that aspect, but I don't get why Ford just doesn't add rear air vents in the back. Now climbing inside, it's pretty easy to get into. Now this seat is pretty far back, but Ford says there's 36.3, so about two inches less in here than in the Wrangler, but it's still a pretty comfortable place to sit overall. In terms of headroom, it's pretty identical. You're looking about 40, 41 inches of headroom. You don't have this large crossbar that kind of obstructs your view outside. Your speakers are actually located behind the second row seats and so is your lighting. So it may not sound as good in the second row because your speakers aren't right above you. Now, as you can see here, there is kind of this textured material here and that is because you have sound deadening on the roof panel. Now, the Jeep Wrangler also has some additional sound deadening for 2024. Not only do you have acoustic glass on the Wrangler, but you've also got additional insulation in the A-pillar. So on the inside, I imagine they're gonna sound pretty similar. This one being the hard top, it's probably gonna be just a little bit quieter on the freeway. Okay, now jumping into the back of the 
the Bronco, you do have a generally larger trunk space. Uh, it's a little bit wider, a little bit taller. Now jumping into the Wrangler, it's a much smaller door to open and it's also lower to the ground in terms of the trunk entry height. It's also a pretty small trunk as compared to the Bronco. It's a little bit narrower, it's a little bit shorter. It doesn't feel like you can fit as much stuff, but the advantage here is when you fold down the second row seats, your lip isn't as big. You've actually got a cloth piece that connects the second row to the trunk space. So you can generally load flat items in the back, whereas in the Bronco, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Okay, now let's talk about what's under the hood of both of these beauties. Starting off with the Jeep. Well, this is the 392 engine, which is just the cubic inch size of this engine. It's a 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that produces a whopping 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Now this is the exact same engine you'll find in the Dodge Challengers, the Dodge Chargers, tons of different Jeep and SRT products. Now all of that power is sent through an eight-speed automatic transmission and this engine will catapult the Wrangler 392 zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. Now fuel economy is the sacrifice. You're looking at 13 in the city, 17 in the highway for a combined 14 MPG. Now let's take a look at what's going on underneath the Bronco Raptor. Well first off you got hood struts here which makes sense because this is an expensive vehicle. Come on Jeep you can do a little bit better job. Talking about what's under the hood here it's a little bit of a different philosophy. It's a three liter twin turbo V6 engine that produces 418 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque. So it's a little bit less torque and horsepower than the Wrangler but it is also a very powerful engine. This is used in the Ford Explorer ST but it's been tuned and enhanced a little bit differently here in the Raptor setting. This is not the exact same engine that you'd find in the F-150 Raptor. That one is a three and a half liter. Now all of this power is sent through a 10-speed automatic transmission. It works really well. That's the only option you can get. And this thing will do zero to 60 in just about 5.6 seconds. And that was as tested by car and driver. Now fuel economy isn't much better here. You're looking at 15 in the city, 16 on the highway for a combined 15. And top speed on this one is governed at 114 miles an hour. So just two better than the Wrangler. All right, now let's talk about the off-road capabilities of both of these beasts. As you can see here, this tire looks a lot smaller than this one, and that's because it is. The Wrangler 392 comes with BF Goodrich all-terrain 35-inch tires from the factory wrapped around 17-inch beadlock capable wheels. Now, comparing that to the Raptor, these come with the exact same BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, but these are 37 inches tall, so two inches bigger than that in the Wrangler. These are also wrapped around 17-inch wheels. Now, talking about the suspension, you have a Fox suspension over here, and then over on the Raptor, you've got what four Ford calls the Haas 4.0. It's the high performance off-road stability suspension with Fox live valve technology and position sensitive damper. So this suspension is essentially made to actively adjust when you're taking this off-road. Now a big difference that Wrangler owners will be quick to point out is you have a solid front axle over here on the Jeep versus an independent front suspension here on the Bronco Raptor. Now the advantage of course of a solid front axle is when one tire is up in the air, the other one will be driven into the ground, giving you better traction, better off-road capability but the advantage to an independent front suspension is that this is going to be a little bit more composed driving it down the road. The Wrangler kind of wanders when you're driving on freeway speeds whereas this thing feels very composed. Now both of these of course have these rock rails, tons of skid plates underneath. The Bronco has this sidestep but this can actually be removed with just a few bolts over here and this is a rock rail and then you've got skid plates underneath here as well. Because the Raptor is a taller vehicle you've got 37 inches of water fording capabilities versus the Wrangler you're looking at 34 inches. Now a approach angle is very similar, but I'm gonna let you guess which one's the winner. The Wrangler has a 47.4 degree approach angle versus a 47.2 degree approach angle on the Raptor. In terms of breakover angle, you're looking at 27.8 degrees versus 30.8 degree breakover angle on the Raptor. And then departure angle on the Wrangler is 40.4 degrees versus 40.5 degrees on the Bronco Raptor. Now in terms of ground clearance, you're looking at 13.1 inches on the Raptor versus 12.9 inches on the Wrangler. One benefit of the 2024 Wrangler is you have a full float Dana rear axle. So that should make it for a little bit better durability off-road and on other trim levels of the 2024 model year you can now get upwards of 5,000 pounds of towing capacity versus this one right now is 3,500. The Raptor is actually 4,500. Now let's listen to the exhaust on both of these.
Okay, so setting off in the Ford Bronco Raptor. Now, this is my first time driving this vehicle. Uh, of course, I'm familiar with the Bronco because I own one, but definitely not as powerful as this one. So let's do a quick little acceleration here. Wow. No, I mean, this thing is, uh, is pretty quick, surprisingly quick. I mean, there's definitely a delay uh, when you're stomping it onto the ground. So let me just do uh, a little bit of a uh, hard acceleration. Yeah, I mean, it takes a second to kick in. It's definitely on the slower end. But once it kicks in, this thing feels pretty quick. I mean, honestly, you'd be hard pressed to uh, compare the full outright acceleration of this one with the Jeep Wrangler. I mean, it's definitely got a lot of that higher end pickup that you would expect from a turbocharged engine. Now, does it sound nearly as good as a Wrangler 392? No, it doesn't. I mean, it sounds a lot worse, but it doesn't sound bad. I mean, it sounds like any other turbocharged uh, V6 engine. And I gotta say, you know, from zero to 60, this would definitely lose. I mean, there's already tests out there between the Wrangler and this one, and this one's slower. Even in the quarter mile, this one is slower. But there is a certain charm to having a turbocharger. There's uh, a little bit of that fun factor where it kind of, you know, the boost kicks in and you get a little bit of that head to the back of the headrest type of feel that you don't necessarily get in the V8 Hemi in the 6.4 liter Wrangler. Uh, you get kind of a more gradual acceleration, whereas this one's kind of more, I guess, childish in a way because it will all of a sudden just kind of throw you back, chirp the tires, because you do have two wheel drive here. You don't get that on the Wrangler. And so it's kind of sillier almost than the Wrangler. The Wrangler of all things being a Mopar seems a little bit more composed than this one does, which is very, very odd. Do acceleration. Yeah, I mean, once that turbo kicks in, it really kind of takes the wheel. And it's actually a really fun car to drive. It's not fast, but it is pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it's very aggressive and it shifts. It's pretty quick overall to accelerate. You definitely feel the width of this vehicle when you're changing lanes and uh, it, it feels a little bit different than the Wrangler, but... Yeah, I mean, that was pedal to the floor. It definitely takes a second or two for the turbo to spool up and kick in, but once it does, it really doesn't feel that much less powerful than the Wrangler. Okay, now jumping into the Wrangler Rubicon 392. This thing just sounds really good at startup. I mean, nothing else can replicate this, but let's get this thing going. Wow, I mean, you know, the acceleration here is uh, very gradual, but very quick. And what I will say is, no matter what, this could be a slow vehicle, but if it sounds the way this car does, it's gonna feel very fast. Nothing can replicate the sound here. I mean, this thing just sounds like a monster and it really does pick up very quick. Where I do find that this car lacks a little bit in power is just when you're at speed on the freeway and accelerating, it takes a little bit of time for this thing to accelerate because it's a heavy vehicle, but zero to 60 and I mean, this thing feels like a sports car. It really does. It handles like a muscle car. It sounds like a muscle car. Uh, this thing is fun in a different way than the Raptor. I can't say the Raptor is any less fun because you get that turbo that kicks in and you kind of lose steering and you don't really know where you're going. You also have two wheel drive mode in the Raptor. Here it's all wheel drive, but honestly, two wheel drive in this, you would die. I, I mean, there's just, there's no mistaking it. You know, both vehicles are incredibly fun to drive and you can't really go wrong with one or the other. It really depends on your personal preference and uh, you know, what you like. If you like turbocharged engines, you're gonna really enjoy the Bronco Raptor because that one does a very good job at executing a great turbocharged engine. If you like V8, you like muscle cars, uh, well, this is gonna be really your only option unless there's an additional Bronco Raptor that comes out with a V8. But you know, gunning this thing is like you're flying into outer space. Now, pricing for both of these is actually oddly very similar and it's continued to creep up year after year. I mean, I remember when this thing started in like the 70s, this was supposed to be high 60s, low 70s. Well, those prices are long gone. The Wrangler for 2024 with the 392 engine starts at $88,190. But this one with the additional power roof and 
that Warren winch. This one tops at around $96,000. Now a new Bronco Raptor on the other hand starts at $86,580. So they're within just a grand or two of each other. So very similarly priced, but both of these are actually commending markups nowadays. So you could probably see either one of these over a hundred grand. So to finish off this video, which one of these should you buy? Well, it really depends on which one you think looks better. I mean, honestly, these are both incredibly capable and they've got advantages in their own right. For example, the Wrangler has that V8 engine. It sounds great, has really good pickup. Uh, it's just such a weird engine to have in a vehicle of this size. It's so boxy. It's typical Mopar craziness where you have a giant engine inside of a vehicle that probably shouldn't have it. It's also a lot narrower and it's got some incredible off-road goodies. So if you're looking at rock crawling this vehicle, that solid front axle should be very helpful in sticky situations. The Raptor on the other hand, this vehicle is packed with lots of cool off-road tech. We're talking seven different drive modes. You've got greater ground clearance and more capability when you're water fording. It also looks like a badass. I mean, this thing is very menacing when you're driving down the road. Now, is it a little bit wider than you'd probably like if you're going rock crawling? Yes, but it is very capable if you get in a sticky situation. My personal opinion is, well, I have a soft spot for Mopar, so I'd probably pick the Wrangler, even though I own a 2021 Ford Bronco. I think for the off-road conditions that we're in, I need something narrower, and I love the sound of that engine. That being said, I wish the Wrangler Rubicon 392 had a better brand name to it. I mean, nobody really knows what this thing is unless you're in the know, versus this thing, Everybody knows what a Bronco Raptor is. I think Ford nailed it with the branding on this thing. And honestly, this thing doesn't disappoint. This thing has plenty of capabilities. And both of these vehicles will pretty much take you 100% of the places you want to go. So it really comes down to your personal preference. The pricing's the same. Capabilities are very similar. So which one do you think looks better? And which one fits your needs a little bit better? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, again, huge thank you to Makes and Models for giving me the opportunity to review this Bronco Raptor for you all today. This thing is for sale. So if you guys are in the market, make sure you reach out to them. I doubt it's going to last very long, but let them know Shwayze sent you. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And if this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Shwayze underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Shwayze, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.